It's Wednesday, the 20th of September, and it's time for an Oroville update. My name's Juan Brown, and you're watching the Blanco Lirio Channel. Hurricane Maria is pounding Puerto Rico right now and expected to follow Hurricane Jose up to the north and miss the continental United States, but not before pummeling the already beat down islands in the Caribbean. Meanwhile, out west here, we're finally getting our first sense of a change of season. Our first cooler, wetter bit of weather is moving through the North State right now. Just expect a few light showers, maybe some snow flurries in the High Sierra. Around here, local meteorologists are anticipating a La Nina type weather event this year. La Nina means cooler weather in the North Pacific, which is going to drive cooler, drier storms into Northern California perfect weather conditions for finishing up the great race at Oroville. And what a finish it's going to be. Did you see that finish on the gold of the Reno National Championship Bear Races? This is going to be a very similar finish, I'm sure. So we'll do these weekly updates and thanks to viewer suggestions, we'll take um, photographs from set positions along the spillway and we'll compare each week the progress made at, on each section of spillway. The Friends of the River report on the Oroville Spillway situation has just come out and I'll provide a link to that here in the comments section of this video. I've glanced through the report and it looks to me like everything that they've recommended in that report has already been addressed or is being addressed at Oroville. The one thing they still want to see is billions of dollars more spent on creating a, a solid spillway or a fully armored spillway from the emergency spillway all the way down to the Thermalito diversion pool to prevent the fishies from getting muddy in the unlikely event that they ever have to use the emergency spillway again. Despite all the disaster during the actual Oroville emergency situation this year, the fish survived after a heroic evacuation of the hatcheries by fish and game long before the people were evacuated. Nevertheless, there's plenty of things we can all agree on in this report and it's good to see public pressure keep the pressure on DWR and government folks to do the right thing at Oroville. It's also time for the bi-weekly press report from uh, DWR and Keywood Engineering at 11 o'clock this morning, so we'll get back, tune into that, and add those numbers to this report. Let's go up and see what the spillway looks like. Well, at the press conference today, the mainstream media was still all about the green spot, and now the report from the Friends of the River. Still without a fundamental understanding of what the purpose of a main spillway is, an emergency spillway, and the construction techniques of an earth-filled dam. It seems that once they get on an agenda, they are relentless in their pursuit of a story where there may otherwise be none. But here's the real-time numbers of what's going on at Oroville. The lake elevation is down to 725 foot elevation. With 7,500 CFS out, they will easily reach their 700 foot goal by 1 November. Barely a trickle of water coming in. 600 employees working in double shifts have put in nearly a half a million man hours of labor with zero injuries. All in all, everything is on track to have a serviceable 100,000 CFS spillway by 1 November. But of course, work will continue on this project 
for at least another year and a half. DWR engineer Jeannie Cuddle carefully broke down each section of spillway and explained the status of each section just as I did on the last video update. The rerouting of the power lines from the Hyatt power plant will be completed tomorrow, 21 September, and the shoe flight temporary connection lines will be brought down this Sunday. This will allow work and drilling to continue on the secant cutoff wall with an expected completion date for that project in December or January. Right now the secant cutoff wall stands at 22 percent completed. The placing of leveling concrete which is the foundation for the structural concrete is 90 percent done and they're expecting a total of 39,000 cubic yards of leveling concrete to be placed this year. They expect to finish up the placing of leveling concrete this week, a major milestone. Now structural concrete placement can really ramp up. Right now 90 slabs have already been placed and 10 wall panels have been placed for a total of 30 percent completion of the structural concrete. 28,000 cubic yards of structural concrete will be placed this season. 170,000 cubic yards of roller compacted concrete has been placed and the roller compacted concrete is now halfway up the main plunge pool. In one record-breaking 12-hour shift, 3,143 cubic yards of RCC was placed recently. And here's what I asked Jeff about that record-breaking attempt. And we will take our first question from Juan Brown with the Union. Hey, good afternoon. On that uh, record-breaking RCC run, how many 12-inch lifts does that represent? How many 12-inch lifts can you get done in a 12-hour shift uh, now that you got some room to work with there? Yeah, basically each shift is, uh, because it's the large area, each shift is one lift of one foot. And if we have, if things are going well, sometimes we can fall back and start a second lift and hand it off to the next shift. But primarily it's one lift each day for each shift. And then as you get closer to the top, that, that, that'll change and you'll be able to get more lifts per shift, I suppose, as, you, as the area gets smaller? That's correct. We'll come up. We'll come up more vertical feet, and the quantity will go down uh, because the wall construction will control the schedule. And uh, what's uh, going on in the pool down below the bottom of the dentates? There, I see some water squirting into a pool. Is that uh, kind of cleaning things up before the water's released back into the diversion pool? Uh, yeah, yeah, and there's some uh, hydroblasting going on on some of the existing concrete to clean it up for the joint tie-in. Okay, and uh, the hardening later layer of RCC, we won't see that until all the RCC is placed? Uh, yeah, well, that's correct. It'll be right towards the end as we're finishing up the RCC at the top. We'll drop half the crew down and start on the enriched layer of RCC from the bottom. Very good. Thanks. I'll let some other guys jump in. That was Jeff Peterson of Keywood Engineering, and the one other set of numbers he had was the crushing of aggregate for the RCC is 70% complete with 460,000 tons of aggregate crushed. Now let's look at some of these spillway section still photos and look at the difference between this week and last week. Here's the upper 870 foot section of spillway from last week, 13 September, and what, what it looks like today, 20 September. And thanks for the viewer tips on camera settings to help sharpen up these images. The leveling concrete is about done in the area of unauthorized blasting and slabs are going in. The big cranes are hauling slab forms and prefab rebar sections. Now here in the main plunge pool it's not quite as dramatic as I thought. But at a rate of only 12 inches every 12 hours, we're looking at a difference of about 14 feet of RCC. You can still see some of these rock islands disappear over the course of a week. Here on the other side of the spillway, you can get a little better view of the RCC lift. 
These pictures are 13 September, and the red line represents where the RCC is at approximately today. And if you scroll back and forth between the two pictures, you can see the difference. And here's what the same spot looks like today. Once they get across this plunge pool with RCC, the surface area will decrease and the rate of rise will increase. With the little help of calculus and differential equations, you can figure all this out on paper. But getting her done is an amazing engineering feat. Notice too the RCC walls spread very wide as they span the plunge pool to maintain the same slope. You can see also some of the green hydro seeding erosion control measures are already taking place. And here's a look at the lower section of RCC over the lower plunge pool, 13 September, and what it looks like today. And the lower 350 feet of structural concrete on 13 September, and what it looks like today. Now here's the latest DWR flyover drone footage posted 18 September. A great vantage point to get an idea of the slope and the size of the main plunge pool. Coming right up. here. Originally 150 feet deep, now halfway filled. And there's the forms for the cutoff wall separating the upper structural concrete portion of the spillway from the RCC section. So thanks again for your continued support of this channel. It's taking a lot more time to get these accurate updates together. So please hit like and subscribe and share these videos with your friends. Hit the little bell on the subscription to get instant notification when updates come out. We only have about 42 days left until the 1 November deadline to have a 100,000 CFS operational spillway in place. So stay tuned to the Blanco Lirio channel for the great race to the finish here of one of the greatest engineering feats going on in America today. By popular demand, a little crosswind landing experience in the mighty Luscombe, winds blowing out of the south about 8 to 12 knots. Landing on runway 7 to the east, the uphill runway, aiming for about the midpoint, midfield point to avoid the worst of the turbulence and the sinking downdrafts off the end of the runway. Keep the upwind wing, the right wing in this case, down into the wind. Keep it straight with left rudder. related to the support that came out from Friends of the River, South Yuba, River Citizens League, American Whitewater. I'm sure you're aware of it. Hi hey there. Um, this is probably a question for Jeff, um, and I don't know if I'm able to answer it just right now, but there is a video, I think it's from September 26th, um, and early on it shows, it looks like workers are carving down uh, walls that are, the walls that are lining the, the way, and I was wondering, um, if you know what I'm talking about and, and why that might be happening. Risa, can you check the date on that video? I think, did you say September 26th? Yes. Did you mean maybe not August, <laughs> considering it's September 20th? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, September 6th, I'm sorry. September 6th. Um, Jeff, I don't know if 
based on that description, you have a comment, but Risa, we can certainly look back at the video and um, maybe you and I can email so that I know exactly what you're referring to. Okay. Okay, and then this is more of a question for Aaron. I was wondering if uh, DWR is um, speaking with the UC Berkeley group um, and has any plans for a more in-depth report that, that they are suggesting with regards to the green spot. 